All right, expired your face, which has inspired lots of humor on the set here about expiring faces. And um, you probably want ours to expire every once in a while if you've watched enough of our videos. Well, um, you can stop watching our videos when you pass your BCBA exam. How's that? So, uh, let's see. You wanted some examples, Mr. Expired Your Face or Mrs. Expired Your Face, whoever you are, um, on indirect assessment and why it's so awful. Well, first off, I must say that it's awful for a reason. It's because it's not direct. So I'll be direct with you, which isn't awful, and I'll explain why indirect assessment... Actually, I've already explained why it sucks, so let's just give you some examples. How about any sorts of intelligence testing? That's indirect on lots of levels, okay, for measuring a hypothetical construct. So that just sucks. But let's apply it more behaviorally, will you? Um, so anytime you're asking someone to report on someone else, that's indirect. If you're not observing the behavior, um, then it's indirect. So if I asked my, like, like, this, oh, it was a great story here. Um, my 13 year old gets her room inspected once a week because I can't handle to do it more than that because my ears will just explode. Um, so the other night I was reading to the kids in bed, the younger kids in bed, and um, the 13 year old, she comes up and she says, it's ready for inspection. And I said, okay. And I, I grabbed the seven year old. I said, go tell me if it's ready for inspection. 13 year old lost the plot. Why? Because she didn't trust her brother to provide an accurate assessment. Right? It was indirect. Right? So young kid came up, young one, he comes back upstairs. And I, said, I asked him a series of questions. How was the room? He goes, it was nice. I go, does she deserve to go to bed? He goes, yes, she does. And I said, well, was there anything on the floor? He goes, well, there was a few things on the floor. And he lists the things. I said, okay, how about the desk? And so on. So anyways, um, the seven-year-old was, was, was giving me an indirect assessment of the bedroom. Right? So do I trust the seven-year-old? Sure, in this particular case I do. He's as pedantic as we are here at PsychCore, which is great. So I do trust him, but I might not um, trust other scenarios, right? If you ask a teacher how a kid does in the classroom, they may not have the best information. If you ask a parent about how their kid behaves at home, they may not have the best information. So any type of indirect assessment is when you're evaluating some behavior without directly observing it, right? Any sort of uh, well, checklists, not so much, but any sort of uh, survey, all right? How do you feel about, or in, in the following scenario, I do the following thing, right? That's all indirect. That's, that, that's not a direct assessment of the actual actions. Um, and they're notoriously inaccurate. But that also doesn't mean we shouldn't use them. It means that you need to be cautious with their use and you need to realize that direct assessment is your best tool, but it might, it's not your only tool. And sometimes all you've got is indirect assessment. So, um, so expired your face. I hope that's helped a little bit to understand that really indirect assessment is just about not directly observing whatever behavior it is that you're interested in. Uh, there's lots of different layers to it when you start to get into other areas of psychology. But in reality, um, it's, it, it's not that awful. I, I like to pick on it on camera, but it, it's, it's not that awful. Sometimes you just do what you can with what you have. And thanks for playing here at PsychCore. And do come back with more questions and we'll get you more answers. Cheerio, folks. Bye.